Yeah, I'm Jack Hedema. Uh, yes, I am now at Texas A&M, but I spent most of my career at Virginia Commonwealth University in the uh, VIPBG uh, uh, Psychiatric Genetics Research Group uh, under Ken Kenther. I have nothing to disclose. Um, I'm actually a, a, a practicing psychiatrist. I specialize in the assessment and uh, treatment of anxiety disorders. I've been studying their genetics for almost 20 years now. So it's a real pleasure of mine to uh, uh, talk to you about uh, the progress we've made in the PGC anxiety disorders working group. Let me just remind you about the phenotype. Uh, pathological anxiety as defined in DSM-5 uh, uh, breaks down into social, specific, and agoraphobias, panic disorder, and generalized anxiety. These basically represent dysregulation of the normal human threat response, and the threat response is, is important in uh, all species for the purposes of survival. Uh, but of course, like any uh, bodily system, uh, it can break down. Uh, just like uh, hypertension represents the dysregulation of normal blood pressure, uh, anxiety disorders, we think, uh, represent the dysregulation of normal fear responses. The thing about the human brain is it has such a complex set of threat responses that it can break in many ways, and thus these various uh, manifestations of anxiety disorders. In fact, uh, the phobias uh, re essentially represent uh, excessive fear and avoidance to particular signals of acute threat, Panic disorder uh, has all the manifestations of the fight or flight response only in the absence of threat, uh, similar to uh, what Don Klein uh, described as a false alarm. Generalized anxiety is more about future potential threat where there's an excessive worry and concern uh, and uh, manifestation of, of anxiety. Uh, our group uh, doesn't investigate uh, childhood disorders like separation anxiety disorder. And although PTSD and OCD are certainly anxiety-related disorders, they have uh, prominent anxiety symptoms and used to be part of the anxiety section of DSM, uh, those are uh, being covered by uh, research in other uh, um, PGC groups, so I won't cover them here. Anxiety disorders uh, are extremely important group of mental disorders. I know every group says that, right? But uh, they're very, very common, uh, probably the most common of, uh, of uh, diff different kinds of mental disorders, one in seven lifetime prevalence, uh, higher female to uh, male uh, uh, risks uh, in, uh, in, in, in these. Uh, their onset tends to be fairly early on in childhood or adolescence, uh, and that onset then predicts future onsets of other anxiety disorders, mood disorders, and substance use disorders, which means by the time we study adults with anxiety, there's a lot of comorbidity. Their course is rather chronic, uh, therefore they have a high burden of distress and impairment, um, and we've learned a lot about their genetics from twin studies. The heritability is only moderate, about 30 to 40 percent for the group, similar to major depression. And because of this high genetic comorbidity, it turns out genetic uh, factors explain some of that, uh, where there's uh, a lot of shared uh, genetic risk amongst the anxiety disorders, between anxiety and mood disorders, and with, a, with the, the predisposing factor of anxious personality, uh, pr predominantly uh, neuroticism and things like uh, 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 low, uh, low social uh, uh, expression. So, uh, these are highly prevalent, moderately heritable disorders with a complex and heterogeneous symptomatology and high lifetime comorbidity. So they represent a real challenge to study, especially for, for uh, genetic approaches. I want to introduce our uh, PGC Anxiety Working Group, which uh, joined the PGC in uh, 2017. I share the uh, chair position with Talia Ile from King's College London and Jürgen Deckert from Wurzburg. We have a, uh, a great team of analysts, Manuel, Kirsten, and Silvio. Uh, we, we have uh, other people who have been supporting our work, uh, Rosa Cheeseman uh, doing a lot of the outreach, my colleague at Brad Verhoost, who's developing uh, statistical methods to apply to these highly comorbid uh, multivariate kinds of uh, uh, processes. And uh, most importantly, I want to thank the 30 or more groups that have now been uh, supplying us with, uh, with data from their, uh, from, from their, uh, uh, their cohorts. Uh, we thank them very, very much for, uh, for this uh, great contribution that they make. And uh, we've uh, so far been funded by one uh, uh, National Institutes of Mental Health uh, R01 uh, grant. 
so, uh, so, so, so this slide is my, my acknowledgement slide, by the way. So, um, but also uh, uh, our current analyses, we are planning uh, or in the process of case control comparisons, uh, primarily within uh, uh, European ancestry groups, like, like uh, most of us uh, start with. Um, uh, our cases have a, a composite diagnosis of any lifetime anxiety disorder amongst the five I described before. Uh, of course, we're going to look at individual anxiety disorders as the data allows and examine that uh, expected and important overlap with depression and neuroticism. Future plans, of course, we want to expand to diverse or, uh, more diverse ancestry groups. There are some uh, very interesting dimensional anxiety measures that uh, function as endophenotypes. We want to uh, uh, collaborate with the other PGC groups to investigate the very important and interesting comorbidity with uh, with uh, mood disorders, anxiety-related disorders, et cetera. And uh, uh, we are interested in uh, the genetics of treatment response as well. So uh, just to give you a little bit of history here, uh, these are the most impactful uh, anxiety disorder GWAS thus far. There, were, there are some other ones I don't have in the chart here, particularly out of the uh, uh, Tokyo University group, but these are the ones that uh, contribute right now uh, to the work we are, we're currently uh, there was a German panic disorder GWAS with about 900 cases in total. It was a, a three-stage design. Uh, they did find uh, association with a, uh, a SNP in this TMEM132 gene. Uh, it was not quite genome-wise significant, but in subsequent uh, analyses, there were independent replications. Uh, my group uh, uh, formed the, uh, the ANX consortium, uh, and uh, my uh, postdoc Takeshi Otowa analyzed uh, what at that time was a fairly large sample for anxiety GWAS, uh, almost uh, 18,000 people, only about 6,000 controls. So we didn't expect very much, but we did find one genome-wise significant locus uh, in this uh, non-coding uh, long RNA. In 2019, there were three published papers, uh, a, a, a long, uh, uh, a lot of work done with the European Panic uh, Consortium, uh, that uh, uh, collected uh, almost a little more than 2,000 cases in their discovery cohort, had a large replication cohort, and were, uh, had a close to a significant uh, association in this uh, SMAD1 gene. Sandra Meyer, together with the Eyesight Group, uh, analyzed anxiety and stress-related disorders. In other words, their cases had anxiety disorders as well as uh, uh, related disorders like uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. They had almost 13,000 cases. They found one genome-wide significant hit in this phosphodiesterase 4B gene. Sandra Purvis from our group uh, uh, conducted a much larger uh, analysis in the UK Biobank. The uh, phenotypes are a little more limited uh, with uh, self-report professional diagnoses uh, with some uh, 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 follow-up with, the, with the CD verification for GAD. Uh, they actually found five genome-wide significant uh, associations. Uh, one of them, the most interesting, is, is in this uh, NTRK2 gene, which uh, is a receptor for uh, BDNF. And, and most recently, uh, Dan Levy, uh, working with um, uh, Murray Steen and Joel Galertner in the Million Veterans uh, Program, looked at uh, uh, self-report professional diagnoses uh, in uh, almost 29,000 cases, and they found two genome-wide significant associations. So, so our work builds on these and actually combines data from these various sets with new ones. So uh, we're, we're still building our first sample freeze after three years. Uh, it's been a bit of a difficult fight along the way. Um, with GDPR and COVID and all the other uh, obstacles that many of you have uh, also encountered. But uh, uh, we, we've uh, conducted a preliminary uh, uh, GWAS meta-analysis with the samples that we felt were, uh, were, were ready in terms of processing and QC. So uh, they're listed here, I won't read them all, but uh, some of the uh, original ANGST uh, uh, data sets, uh, some from the uh, PANIC uh, uh, one uh, GWAS by Forstner et al., uh, the iPsych one, uh, and then uh, the UK Biobank GWAS, uh, together with some uh, ones from QIMR, uh, Hunt, MOBA, uh, Alice Pack, Fingen, uh, Fingen uh, this, this, uh, Estonian Biobank, et cetera. Plus, we have a, a whole list of other ones that uh, we're, we're uh, getting ready to add to uh, this, uh, this cohort uh, to make a very large data freeze, we hope, 
of about 70,000 uh, well phenotype cases uh, and a total of about 130,000 uh, uh, cases in total with 750,000 controls. But for right now, our preliminary analyses apply to uh, 68,000 cases, 460,000 controls. And again, it's a any case, any anxiety disorder case and what we call affective controls, where the controls have no anxiety or depressive disorders, given the very strong uh, genetic overlap between these, uh, these, these syndromes. Okay, so here's our preliminary meta-analysis. We found 12 genome-wide significant uh, regions. Um, the uh, QQ plot is as expected for a polygenic uh, uh, disorder with a very uh, uh, respectable lambda. Here's a list of those uh, 12 associated regions. Don't pay too much attention. They're going to, uh, they're likely to change uh, in the next few months as we add more data sets and conduct more comprehensive analyses. But I just point out that uh, with these starred regions here, here, and here, these also sh uh, were, were uh, reported in the Ray et al. Uh, uh, PGC uh, major depression GWAS uh, that, that came out uh, just a few years ago. So, uh, here's some of the expected overlap with genetic risk for major depression. Also, there's this uh, SORX3 gene that was not only found previously uh, for associated with major depression, but also ADHD and, uh, and other disorders as uh, verified by the cross disorder analysis as a uh, uh, highly uh, 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 cross disorder uh, relevant gene. We uh, conduct, conducted some internal replications with the major data sets via leave one out analyses, and we are reassured that there's high uh, uh, replicability here with these uh, uh, close to one uh, genetic uh, cross uh, uh, correlation. Here's the usual uh, expected plot of uh, uh, cross phenotype genetic correlation, uh, high uh, correlation with, with things like PTSD, neuroticism, and depression, more intermediate uh, correlations with things like bipolar, autism, and uh, schizophrenia. We uh, uh, went ahead and peaked a little bit at the functional analyses using FUMA, and the gene ontology uh, databases uh, uh, came up with uh, uh, the, uh, the, the expected or hoped for uh, kinds of uh, uh, biological pathways uh, having to do with synapses, particularly uh, uh, pre and post uh, synaptic membranes. Uh, we have uh, uh, neurotransmitter vesicles, uh, cation uh, 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 neurotransmission activity, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, again, all reassuring. Also reassuring is the preliminary tissue expression uh, analyses we conducted for these, uh, these uh, association signals, and uh, uh, they, they entirely occur, uh, as far as we can tell, in the brain. And then uh, uh, these are probably a little more uh, 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 preliminary, but uh, uh, we looked at cell, the cell type specific data that's available using uh, RNA-seq in, in uh, specific uh, cell types. And uh, very interestingly, uh, uh, GABA ergic uh, neuron showed up as a, as a, as a primary uh, 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 tissue, uh, which uh, is you know somewhat uh, surprising but reassuring to me because we've known for a long time that benzodiazepines uh, work well to treat patients with anxiety disorders through GABA ergic neurotransmission. So very preliminary. We'll see if it holds up. So where do we stand now in terms of uh, the newest kid on the block having joined uh, the PGC? Uh, so uh, this is from the uh, now already outdated uh, uh, figure three from uh, the Sutherland and Geshwin uh, cell article uh, with the uh, numbers of cases and genome-wide significant loci from the various PGC groups. This is that uh, famous plot where there's a, uh, a point here where the uh, uh, number of uh, genome-wide significant loci that are discovered uh, based upon sample size, turns around and becomes linear. Well, for the more highly heritable disorders like schizophrenia, bipolar, and ADHD, this occurs at a lower number of cases, somewhere between 20 and 30,000. For major depression, it occurred uh, somewhere around the 100,000 case mark or a little, little higher. And this is where we sit with our preliminary analysis with about 68,000 cases. So we think we're somewhere in between as our heritability estimates would suggest and we'll be very uh, interested to see where this takes off when we add the other 
cases to our uh, to our fleas. About the three long, long years, uh, we feel like our, our group is uh, 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 finally starting to rock and roll. Um, unlike uh, Stefan Ripka a number of years ago at this uh, conference, I can't uh, slide out on stage playing the electric guitar, but those who know me know that I've for a long time been a uh, drummer in classic rock band. So we're really, really happy to share these same memories all three of you. Um, tomorrow at uh, PGC Day, uh, Jurgen, Talia, and I are holding a virtual coffee and tea break. So join us if you uh, want to talk more. Thank you very much. <laughs>